All right, welcome to Halloween, I guess. Uh, orange and black, hello? What is this? Uh, it, this wasn't really intentional, intentional, but it came together that way. In any case, CH knives in G10, they're the more affordable budget knife for you. Yes, they are. And for me, in D2, and they're big. Oh, wow. And you know what? Seemed to open and close really good, too. I was sitting there. I'll tell you what. Okay, so here's the story. It might have been David Kim that told me about these. Uh, I saw these under development on CH Knives Instagram and Facebook page where they were showing these G10 knives. And I'm going, wow. Okay, you're going to make these G10 liner locks? And so they came out on Amazon at first, and they were like $35. Maybe they were like $26 to $29 a piece. So I jumped on it. I mean, David's one that gave me a heads up, I believe. <clears throat> or it might have been Ed. I can't remember. In any case, so he said, hey, uh, and I got one. And came in, and I think they're really awesome. And so I I got on Amazon and got, and, and it was Effengrau, which is like E-A-F-E-N-G-R-O-W or something like that, who is on Amazon. You type in that name, knives, Effengrau knives or whatever, and, and they will show you a lot of different knives that they're basically getting and rebranding from OEM manufacturers, whatever. But these, I mean, retain the CH title. They don't rebrand them like on the blade and stuff. They're just selling them under their store name or whatever. In any case, so I go, oh, they're out. And I looked on DH Gate, and they're getting 35 bucks a piece for them. And then whatever. So I ordered a black one because the brown scales of this were sold out. Uh, and I ordered, ordered this orange one because I didn't want to get two black ones. So I got the orange instead of the blue. I'm not sure they have this in black, come to think of it. I think it's orange and blue. Any case, and they didn't have blue. So you know me, blue. Um, but I got this. So this is the 3002 model, which is interesting because they made a 3002 model in titanium. And of course, this is the 3504 model, which is dash G10, right? So they made one in titanium. This is the same size as the titanium G or titanium, the same size as a titanium model, only in G10 with a liner lock. Okay. $35 is the standard price you're going to find these at. Uh, they're really not supposed to be selling them for less than that, except somebody gave me a heads up on Fast Tech. And Fast Tech had these for like $22, $23. So I ordered a blue one. And then they had uh, these for like $24 something. But once CH Knives found out about that, that died too. $35. Bucks. And this was a little bit less. And this is their 3004 model, only G10. And if you remember the 3004 model, you can type CH3004 and find my review, or I'll put the link below this um, for this model in titanium. This model was carbon fiber, titanium on the back that was kind of a black coated, DLC coated titanium. On the front was a carbon fiber slab, and it was a much smaller, lighter knife. Both of these were <laughs> very small and light. In fact, let me see what we got in here. Okay, the wrong one. But in any case, this is the titanium version of the 3504. Some of these come with skulls and at different colors with the skull pattern or no skull pattern at all. Okay, but it's the same size, obviously. Obviously, this is a more sophisticated knife, and this is uh, S35VN as opposed to D2. Okay. In any case, the other I was going to show you, which I do have, is the 3002. And I don't have a 3004 to compare with that, but I do have a 3002 here. See the difference in the size? 
And I discussed this a little bit, I think, on the Trader's Corner I did for March. But in any case, March 10th. Just kind of just showing, I'm saying, hey guys, uh, look what's going on. I haven't heard anything negative from anybody who's ordered any of these G10 knives. I've heard nothing but positives. And the reviews I've seen both on uh, Amazon and DHgate look, you know, they're pretty positive. Uh, so, in incredible. This is a very light S35 VN, very sophisticated, nice knife. And this is a bad, this is a, this is like the, the, I don't know, Mr. Hyde version of Dr. Jekyll here. This guy's really nice and intelligent, sophisticated. This guy's a brute. He's a brute. Um, so, you have the 3504. You have the 3002. You have the 3004. All big knives, though. All about three and a half to three and three quarter inch length. A blade. Big boys, all of them, okay? So let me push these off just real quick because what I'm gonna do is let's get a tape on them, okay? Let's just do that much for right now. Okay, so three and five eighths, eight and three eighths overall, so 21 centimeters and you're talking 90, eh, 92 millimeter length blade somewhere in there okay that's that one but i think this is bigger okay I, I in fact i i'm gonna guarantee it's bigger see that is three and three quarter inch blade and almost eight and three quarter overall which is 22 centimeters yeah and 90 95 96 millimeters Come on, buddy. Last one on the train. What do you got? There you go. Three and three quarter. Uh, eight and five eighths. And right there, 22 centimeters at 96, 95, 96 millimeter blade. What do you think? Wow. And I'll tell you what. Another thing. These are fat. Look at the big, thick stainless liners in there. 14.6 millimeters. That's going to be some stuff. 0.57 thick. 0.56 thick. And to round it out, 0.57. So about the same. Which did you catch the millimeters? 14.6. Blade stock. I think we're looking at 4 millimeter. Yeah, we are. 4 millimeter. Yeah, four millimeter. Just get all this out of the way. Yeah, right there. So, four millimeter blade stock, over eight and a half inches, three and three quarter inch blades. Except for this one, this is a little smaller. <laughs> in in the real world of titanium, this is the big boy. These are small. So this is actually the junior member now. Now. What's nice is that I can't find my flashlight. Oh, that I can. Let's take a look in here. So this is skeletonized, right? They skeletonized the liners of this one for weight reduction. Okay. So that's nice. I think they did the same to this. And I'm, I'm going to have to look because I know this one did not. Yeah, this one did. The 302 is really weird. And this one, I didn't see them, see? They didn't do it on this one. Really strange. But this is less money. This was less money, so, okay. But, I mean, ugh. big and fat in the hand. Uh, but the action's really good. The action's really good. Very intuitive with the flipper. You know, it just stands right up there real straight. There's no jimping on there. There's traction all along the back here on the 3004 model. You know, good um, texturing on the G10. Backspacer matches. Okay, so let me let me run this one by you. This will kind of be freaky. Why? If the backspacer, this will be the Cl Steve Kluver killer because he likes all black and he doesn't understand this. 
Why did they do this? Why did they match this and not this? If they would have gone black on here, then he could have swapped back spacers and had all black. Go figure on that one, right? So the same, these are the same model, but they go orange backspacers on both. I don't know. I can't figure that. I don't know. Any case, but they do have backspacers, which is kind of nice. I like that. I've put these in my pocket and yes, the clips work okay. They're not overly stiff. They're springy enough and they slide right in because they're giving you that. Thing is, they don't kind of bend over a little bit. So could they present a bit of a hot spot in the hand? It just depends on your hands and the size and where they're hitting. This one's hitting me right kind of between these two fingers. So it's kind of fitting in that crease okay. Mm, and I don't know um, how that would be over time. You know, if you were cutting for a long, long period of time, really hard use. This one's not so much. Do you notice this pocket clip a little bit different? This one, a little bit, you can feel that more. This one's not so obtuse. Okay, let's look at the, the, the last one here. Yeah, we're getting out there. So, um, yeah, and that one hits me right there. Yeah, that's, that's not as good. So, yeah, these pocket clips are not perfect. Um, they could present a hot spot. Um, it, you know, I just, I've, I've never really sat out and done tons of work with a uh, heavy use uh, pocket knife where I didn't have gloves on. So if you had gloves on, yeah. Uh, without the gloves, um, usually I'm done doing what I'm doing after 15, 20, 30 minutes. So I, now I don't think this would be uh, that difficult to overcome. I'm not feeling it that much. In any case, you know, you on the 3504, you got jimping on top. 3004, got jimping on top. 3002, got jimping on top. So, you've got traction, not so much here. So, you've got some fine milling along here on the 3002. Where in the middle here, it's fairly slick. There is no, there is no uh, texturing, but yeah, this is probably adequate along the top and bottom here. I can feel that. And with this and all these three, I've noticed they, I mean, it's, I don't know if it's really that much of a go forward choil. You can, but it, just a choil for sharpening purposes. So that's nice as well. A little bit here. Not a whole lot. Kind of strange. Look at that flipper tab come way out and can't forward like here. Strange, huh? A little bit different um, in sophistication. This one obviously is smoother. This one's not bad. This is, you know, this is good. But this one's even more rounded and smooth and... Uh, it's milled in the middle, so it gives a little bit more sophisticated look to it, you know, as opposed to this. These are not as beautifully, elegantly finished, but they're 35 bucks. Actually, I never paid 35 for one of these. I got this one at 26 and this one at, God, I can't remember, maybe 24 And this one, yeah, about same about 25 something like that so um in any case d2 uh <clears throat> i can't speak to the d2 although you know i just saw on his website ping i call him it's ch knives the owner he used to work at kaiser right and uh went out on his own his brother is the reich knife guy okay so um i'm sure they probably share suppliers so if Reich Knives knows how to get a hold of some good steel, I'm sure CH and his background with Kaiser, etc. And he actually, what I was going to say is he had a posting on his, on his uh, Facebook where he was uh, doing a test showing the validity of the steel. 
So that was interesting with some kind of a meter. And I don't know what exactly, I, you know, I mean, the readout, you'd have to pause the video or something to see the readout and stuff. But also, there's been another YouTube reviewer. I won't mention his name because uh, I don't want to set him in the middle of this. But he did cut tests with the small version of this in D2, the smaller version of this in D2. And he said, oh man, it just kept kept cutting and cutting and cutting and he, you would know him. So, uh, but he, yeah, it worked really well. So in any case, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go along with that and say it's, it's valid D2. Um, just from his cutting test results, he's done a lot of test results on other knives and stuff and probably will continue to do so in the future. So these are just interesting knives. I just thought I'd put these up on my channel. I got several requests from other viewers that have bought these and said, hey, when you, when you, you know, have you, do you know about these and are you going to do a video on these? And I go, yeah, yeah, I am. Actually, I have some in hand. I've got a blue 3002 uh, coming in. I've got a brown scaled 3504 coming in. So, you know, I was kind of hoping to wait, but I thought, you know what? I've got the models. I just don't have all the color variations. That's no big deal. And you know what? Have you seen the internals of these? Well, we'll take one apart. Maybe you can see the internals of these. Uh, I haven't taken one apart yet. So I haven't looked at the internals, but... I'm sure what you've got is, in this case, of course, they haven't weight relieved or skeletonized the, the liners, but I imagine probably using the same bearings from one to the other, and it's pretty well centered. The action's really good on it. Um, oh, well, you might want to know if any of these things will actually cut anything. Oh, wow. Well, they did that one well. Never mind. I'm just... You can just tell by how it goes through. Yeah. Yeah, that, that one they did well, too. So, so, you know, some knives, I mean, I think they hand sharpen them. Some are better than others. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, that's, yeah, that's even better. Wow, that's pretty good. Okay, so now we've made a huge mess. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. So, let's, if you want to hang on. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's just pull one of these dogs apart. Uh, which one do I hate the most that I don't care if I screw it up completely? <laughs> How about you, buddy? Um, and I like these Weehaw bits. They're really good. Um, I use them. They're uh, hardened steel. So, wow, they really work really good. And, uh, well, that screw's coming out. Can I hit the hole? Can I see through the camera? No? Can't see through anything. Let me see if I try not to dump these screws uh, on the floor. I did that once before. I had to vacuum the carpet up with a, with a mesh over the nozzle just to catch my screw again. Couldn't find it. In the, I got carpet in here. So that's insane. Um, well, let's see. Well, we're going to move both sides. Yeah, we're going to try. You know, the only cure for that is throw another number eight in this side and hold that. You know? Okay. So pull those babies out. Got them off to the side and stay where you are. We'll be right back. Okay, so we got this uh, scale off, so we see the liner on this one. Not a whole lot of glory there, right? Because, um, and I got a hold of this, uh, this stop. In any case, and let's, uh, we've got her wedged in here. We're going to pop these babies off. Come on, let go. Let go. There we go. Little by little. They're pressed on there a little bit. There we go. 
And we still got the stop pin stuck in there. That's good. Leave it alone. I don't need it. And so what did we get? We got one of the bearings come out. That's what they look like. Those are not ceramic bearings. Those are regular steel bearings. Ah, I've been cheated. What? Did I, oh, I paid $24 for this thing. That's crazy. Um, in any case, so there we go. And that's what it looks like. This is how dirty it is. You know what? That is dirty. That is some dirty. Uh, it looks like to me. Usually when I pull knives apart, they're not quite... You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's... You know what I've noticed on some of these knives is I don't know what his preferences are, uh, but I guess on these G10 models, it's, you know, but it's more like a solid type of, uh, it's, oh, it's almost like a lithium grease or something. And it's not a real light. Oh God, I don't have, well, I'm, I guess I'm not going to put it back together anyhow. Uh, cause I don't have any stuff to waller this out with. I mean, to get all the remnants out and I don't have any lube to put back in it. Well prepared, don't you think? So there's the backspacer and there's the bearings on the other side that they do look like they've got you know, it's more of a solid type of grease in there, which wouldn't have been my choice exactly. But, no. At least they got the side that I believe in. You know, the, the open side toward the steel and the closed side towards the blade. So that's what I do in any case. So here you go. At least this gives you an exploded view of the knife. And, uh, it's little bits and pieces in here, but it did come apart. Nothing, uh, you know, didn't spin a screw or strip anything out or anything like that. So it came apart pretty easily for me. Um, and you got to watch that. You don't want to get a real soft Torx wrench that's not been uh, hardened steel because they will they will tear up and then they'll start eating the guts right out of the, your your Torx screw. Uh, it'll start to spin and uh, that will not be good. In any case, all right, I'm going to let you go. I mean, I've taken enough of your time. What is this, 22, 22 and a half minutes uh, for all this u on the CHG10 knives. But I think they're interesting. I, I think they're a really good bargain. Actually, I really like the action on them. I mean, that drops as nice as uh, a lot of, you know, and, and drop is not everything, but... That's just nice action, you know. I mean, there's a lot of knives out there that cost a lot more money, right? And, or amount the same, and they don't even have bearings, right? They got washers, and they got D2 steel, but, okay, so do these. So at that point, and I'm not here to put anything down, but, you know, washers is washers. And if you like washers, then there are a lot of good choices out there, including these are really good knives. I really like this Steel Will Intrigue and uh, Steel Will. <laughs> Obviously, they're on my table all the time. Um, but, you know, wow. Nice action on these. I think he's hitting the marketplace at the right, uh, at the right price point. I mean, they're sturdy. They're grippy. Uh... They're not really any frills per se, but the action's really nice on them. They feel solid. And of course, with these heavy steel liners and these backspacers, really gives them a lot of structural uh, integrity, I think. I mean, they're tough. They are tough. And they make a great flipper toy. And if I keep playing like this, I'm going to cut myself right on the thumb. Yeah, like them though. Cool. Yeah, I like the designs. I always like the designs of uh, a lot of his knives. And so G10 for 35 bucks. Hey, why not? What the heck? All right, now I've dragged you into 25 minutes. Get out of here. I'm getting out of here. I know that for sure. So thank you so much for joining me. Hey, I appreciate it. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Peace. We're out because we love them knives. So stay sharp.